Shalom. This is Rabbi Maurice Glar, and uh, welcome to our tonight's uh, Beit hey, Rafa. Hold on, honey. It's not live yet. All right. Tell me when it yeah, actually. Now it. Now it's live. Go. Okay. Shalom. Good evening, and welcome to tonight's Beit Rafa broadcast. Uh, I'm Rabbi Maurice Glar, and I want to welcome you tonight. This is day 100, 100 uh, days in a row. We have come on ever since the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, what did I do? Oh, shoot. Okay. Anyway, ever since the uh, uh, the beginning of this shut-in, which was, I think, St. Patrick's Day until now, we've been on every single evening. And it's just uh, been a wonderful experience. And so, um, I, I'm now in a Zoom call format, so I can't see your names this evening. I, I will, uh, I usually do, but <coughs> for right now, and, and honey, I, if you don't mind giving me a little water uh, when you can, <laughs> just Devorah's watching. But I am uh, on a Zoom call right now with uh, my friend and uh, outstanding prophetic uh, Bible teacher, uh, Teresa Bruce, I, I hope you are on there. Yes, she's waving. I hope you can see her. We're, I'm on a, a split screen here, so I hope we can. Thank you, honey. My wife brought me water. That's good. Praise the Lord. So excuse me just a minute. We had a little bit of a warfare and, you know, and all the technical stuff and trying to get on. But anyway, what I'm going to do we're, tonight, what I'd like to do is uh, uh, bring on uh, uh, Sister Teresa in, in just a little bit. But I want to receive uh, the communion this evening, and, and I want to welcome all the dear ones that are, that are coming on. And uh, I'm going to put, I, today, I'm going to music for uh, this first part here. I'm going to, uh, this is Sacred Treasures five so this is uh whoops i tell you what we've had one of those days today just been a fight to get everything through here so this is uh beautiful music from russian uh orthodox uh, acapella <coughs> vocal fire music and uh, it's just all scriptures, and they're singing it, and it helps me to minister. Whoops, press the wrong button again. Oh, there. It helps me to minister when I have the right kind of music. So, praise the Lord. So let's let's receive uh, the Lord's Supper tonight and go before the Lord. You know, it, uh, we've been doing this nearly every day, and uh, I like to say the Hebrew blessing over the bread and wine, and then. Uh, we will uh, also receive the communion. Hallelujah. Just, I put it all together. And, and you might say, well, why do you do that? Why do you put the Jewish stuff in there? You know, well, I'm a Jewish believer in Yeshua. And uh, <clears throat> the Lord's never let me uh, let go of that. In fact, I'm, I'm called to stand right in the middle as an example of one new man. And so I tell people, I believe the whole Bible, every bit of it. I, I'll even believe the footnotes if they're good, but if they're not good, I won't. <laughs> but most of all, we want the Ruach HaKodesh, to, the Holy Spirit, to lead us and uh, guide us. And he's the spirit of truth. And uh, we're living in some perilous times these last days. And I don't know a better thing to do than to come to the Lord's table and receive uh Come into that secret place of the Most High where there's safety, there's shalom, there's provision. There is a separation between the light and the darkness and God's people and, and those that uh, choose not to submit to the Lord. These are dangerous times. And like I say, you know, we have to come out of a, a condition of being halfway in, halfway out with God. We need to surrender to him. And as we come before the Lord, he gives us supernatural power 
and strength to stand and overcome in this final hour. Hallelujah. So, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaHamotzi Lechemin HaAretz. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore Pri Hagafim. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine, and Yeshua, on the night he was betrayed in that wonderful Passover meal, he took, took the bread. It's, this is no longer just the, uh, uh, this is an example of our deliverance from Egypt. This is not just uh, a normal Passover. This was an uh, initiation of the new covenant. And he said, this is now my body broken for you. And he said, take and eat as often as you do it. Drink. And, and, and receive my blood. And he said, uh, it will bring life to you. And of course, God substituted his son in our place. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but receive eternal life, everlasting life. He is the bread of life. His body was broken so we could be healed, so we could be restored, so that nothing would be missing or broken. God wants to make you whole. And as you come before the table of the Lord and you release your faith, hallelujah, this is a holy altar. This is holy communion. You know, for hundreds of years throughout the church, this was the very center of every gathering, every meeting. Yeshua said, uh, do this as often and I say as often as you can. And, you know, what a difference it's made ever since I've started to do this every day. I am in another level. I'm in a place of victory. Hallelujah. And you, this is the table that God has prepared for us in the presence of our enemies. It says in Psalm 23, the Lord is our shepherd. He prepares this table of victory, a table of provision, a table of protection, a place of covenant, and that's a place of safety. Hallelujah. Psalm 91 says, uh, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. And this is, this is a, an altar God has raised up. There's fire on it. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, and even though it's a, you know, just here at home, this is a holy place for me and we have to learn about the knowledge of the holy we have to learn how to, the, to to fear the lord reverence his presence judge yourselves and father we thank you for providing wholeness for us so let's receive his this is the body of yeshua he's it broken for you the body of messiah Hallelujah. praise the lord Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be his holy name. Hallelujah. Yes, someone who has had uh, severe panic attacks since you were a child. Um, and yes, every everything related to spirit of fear is leaving you right now. Fear not. He said in panic attacks and heart palpitations, asthma, which uh, something, uh, someone, uh, uh, yes, when you were young, you watched a horror movie and that spirit of fear attached itself and it manifests in asthmatic attacks and God is delivering you from that right now. Food allergies are being healed. I'm getting some word of knowledge right now. But receive what you need physically, soulishly. Hallelujah. The chastisement of our shalom, our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. We were healed. We have a covenant of healing. Yeshua bore our sicknesses, carried our infirmities. We worship you now. We worship you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Yeshua took the cup of redemption on that Passover evening and uh, long ago, <laughs> and he said, "This is not uh, this is not just uh, uh, our re remembrance of our redemption from Egypt, but uh, coming out of slavery." Hallelujah. But this is now my blood that was shed for you. This is the New Testament, the new covenant in my blood. His precious blood has paid the price for our salvation. He has remitted our sins and put them under his precious blood. Hallelujah. And we, we ask you to, to, to help us, Lord. If you're not totally right with God, hallelujah, make things right. Right now, just say, Father, forgive me. I'm sorry I've sinned against you. I'm coming back to you. Someone has lived a, a, a compromising life. And God says it's time. And just come back to him. He will receive you into fellowship again. He wants a relationship and a fellowship with you. And this is where we join with him. And come into union with Messiah. Hallelujah. His precious blood. Just ask God to forgive you and cleanse you. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Change me. I cannot change myself. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I can't save myself. Save me, Lord. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior, as my Messiah, my soon coming King. Hallelujah. I want to be a part of that precious bride, that the overcoming church in this final hour. Without spot or wrinkle, you're preparing us, Lord, to see you. Oh, we want to see you face to face. Until then, you said you're going to drink that new wine with us in the kingdom. But until then, we do this in remembrance of you. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the awesome price that you paid. This is the blood of Messiah shed for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We'll uh, get to our, I call them spiritual vitamins, and we receive our promises. But you know what? I really, I feel the Holy Spirit so strong right now. Yes, someone that twisted your, yes, sir, the lower back, you, you, Actually, I think you fell down some steps, maybe in the front of your house or something. You, you fell, and it never totally healed right. You have uh, reflexive pain as well. You have God is healing your lower back. I'm touching the right side of my back. Oh, that's where I feel it. But be healed right now, dear one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you for being patient. Uh, with us, uh, uh, Teresa, and oh, my pleasure. Oh yeah. Now, are you in? Um, are are you in? Uh, you're in Oklahoma. Are you near Tulsa, Oklahoma, right now? Yes, we're near Tulsa right now. We um we split split time between Tulsa and California, the Central Coast, of course. Uh, right now, we're here in Tulsa visiting my daughter and her family and my grandkids. So. Uh, you may hear them running around a little bit. <laughs> hey, that's all right. That's a, that's not a distraction. We <laughs> we love, we love the, the the grandchildren for sure. Uh, but uh, Teresa, I first heard you maybe four, maybe three or four years ago, maybe three years ago, something like that. You that's had a conference. Twenty fifteen, Maurice. It was five <laughs> years. Five years ago. Is it that? <laughs> We had just moved here. Amazing. We're, we're, uh, I'm in Santa Maria uh, on the central coast here. And you're from, you're living in San Luis Obispo, not too far from us. But she had, a, a, Teresa had a conference on the meaning of the, uh, the all the, the member of the blood moons and the, and I heard some things that I hadn't heard before, though, that fascinated me. And I, you know what? I don't know everything. I know very little. 
but what God has called me to do, but it certain puzzle pieces fitted together, particularly concerning the times and seasons and what's going on right now. What's going on here in America and in the world? What, 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 in, the, what in the world's going on? I know, that's funny. <laughs> I actually have been doing a series called What in the World is Happening? That's right, that's right. It's, oh. it's talking about that, yeah. Well, so what I'd like you to do is, is Teresa, just bless us and, 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 and share with us. She has studied, she's a, a powerful teacher, studied the word of God and particularly concerning the place of Israel in the end times and the restoration of Israel and the, uh, the seasons of uh, judgment uh, as well. And so I just think it'll bring some clarity to some areas that the church is a little fuzzy in. You know what I'm saying? So yes. would, you, would you take it and, and just, just share with us what God's given you? I would love to. Well, let me start out by saying that I, ha I became a born-again believer in, when I was 19 years old back in 1974, which means I'm dating myself, but I don't mind that. <laughs> oh, 76. Uh, so yeah, was, oh, there we yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, during the Jesus movement. And it was actually literature. Uh, my aunt was sharing information about the return of Jesus. So the coming of Jesus has been a focal point of my life since I got saved. And then in 2008, my husband and I kind of woke up to the Torah. And it's funny, Maurice, you say that you're a Jewish believer in Yeshua, and I'm a follower of Yeshua or Jesus who studies Torah. So I was a Christian who discovered the Torah. And so we started keeping the feasts and we you're started- You're probably a better Jew than I am. <laughs> even though it's a gen I mean, you're, 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 I'm learning, I'm growing. I, you know, I, so it's just like Peter and Paul, you know, Paul was the Jewish scholar. God sent him to the, to the, the, the uh, Gentiles and Peter, the uneducated fish, not, not, you know, uneducated fisherman, God sent him to the Jews. And God loves to do that kind of mix, doesn't he? It's a bridge. I really feel like we're a bridge. And I was excited to have you call me because I feel like it's a bridge between the two sides. Mm -hmm. Now, since in the last about four, I think four years, maybe a little bit longer, I've really spent a lot of time studying Jewish eschatology because I was already very familiar my whole life with Christian eschatology and the study of mm -hmm. end times. But when I started learning more about the feasts and how they tie into the first and second coming of Jesus, I realized I needed to understand Jewish end time teaching. So it's, it's different. It's mm. different. And it's all around the feasts. And I think that's what's very important. Oftentimes in the church, we'll see there'll be some kind of an event like we're going to the blood moons. We'll talk about that. And from a Christian perspective, a lot of people believed that the blood moon tetrads were um, warning of these, they were telling us that that was the second coming of Jesus or the rapture, some kind of an event. What is a tetrad? What does that mean, tetrad? All right, the blood moons, for those of you that have never heard this before, and again, this is coming a lot of Jewish teaching. A, uh, an eclipse, a solar eclipse means there's judgment or uh, a warning to the nations. But a lunar eclipse means there's warning of judgment or danger for the Jewish people or the land of Israel. And a blood moon is when there's a complete sol or lunar eclipse and the, the moon actually turns blood red. It looks sort of orangey. Uh, orange or blood it looks bloody basically it's kind of a blood but, but people say well the well with the blood moons i mean they they said oh no it's oh you know and then and then it passed it seemed like nothing happened so what 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 about that well it does that's because we were looking for a specific event now the other thing that's very important about these particular blood moons is they happened on two important feast days right they've happened on jewish feast days the feast of passover and the feast of sukkot Right. That's what's important about these, because these blood moons happen all the time. But when they fall on feast days, two years in a row, 2014, 2015, that's significant. And that's only happened now eight times in history. Mm -hmm. And it's this last time. Heavens, right. This is God saying, uh, hello. Yeah, uh, this is important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, the thing that people were thinking was that it was some event for the church, 
But in reality, the blood moons are warning of a period of time, not a specific event. That's right. the way I started to approach it, was they were warning of a period of time. Now, several years ago, I came across a study by Billy Brim. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Billy Brim. She's yeah. a um, yeah, Word of Faith teacher. Oh yeah, I love her teaching. Yeah. Yeah, she's wonderful. But she shared in her, her I think it was a, a CD series on the end times about something called the Shemitah year prophecy. It's the day that everything changes. And now the Shemitah year prophecy was a Jewish prophecy that had been around for quite a while. But they said that on Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets in the year 2000, everything would change and a war cycle would begin. Mm. That war cycle would last seven years, and then it would repeat every seven years until Messiah came. Now, I came across this, this prophecy in about 2010, I think it was, and I was very intrigued by it. So I started to look to see what kind of events happened in, in the year 2000 and during that first war cycle. And sure enough, on Rosh Hashanah, or the Feast of Trumpets in the year 2000, that's the new, right that's that's our new year's the, the, right that's the new year's that's the feast of trumpets that's the new year mm -hmm. um a lot of things very prophetic and that's a that's when you declare shemitah years as well but mm -hmm. that year ariel ariel sharon went up onto the temple mount and declared the uh, prophecy of ezekiel of the two sticks coming together when he did that jihad broke out and the war cycles began one year later that war cycle spread to America on 9-11. And we were attacked by the same group of people, the traditional and ancient enemies of the people of Israel, the Jewish people, the Islamic nations. And sure enough, we were attacked by the same thing. America and Israel are closely linked together. <laughs> yeah, tell us about that. Um, well, when, when the temple was destroyed and the Jewish people were destroyed out of the land, the God had to put his vineyard someplace. Israel is called the vineyard of the Lord and his people are the fruit. But that vineyard, now they're being cast out of that vineyard. So he had to plant a new vineyard someplace. And lo and behold, because Christopher Columbus shows up and uh, even before Christopher Columbus, the Vikings came and declared America, this new land, a vineyard. They called it a place of the vineyard. I believe America has been a place where the, all 12 tribes, including Christians and Jews, can be safely planted and grow for the last, right now it's been about 430 years since America was first founded. So America is like the second vineyard, and I call it an end time vineyard, because in the end of days, like you're talking about, during the uh, final days before the tribulation, God is going to reap the Jewish people, all of Israel, out of the end time vineyard of America and call them back to the land of Israel. Well, but we know that the Jews were scattered all over the world. And uh, probably the, I think that the, 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 so, you know, the lost the 10 tribes as well. So we don't know exactly. I don't think America is the only place that they were, but we, it has been a, a haven uh, and we've, uh, you know, and we know it's also a covenant nation. America made covenant with God when we first the Plymouth uh, Rock and then you know the, uh, the the Mayflower Compact and all these the, the there was something God did. This was they looked at it. The Puritans and those that came here they came for uh, religious freedom so that they could worship God according to the Bible and their conscience. And That's so true. that founding, the true founding uh, of, and so this is this very special place, uh, a promise. They looked at it as the promised land, just like uh, Abraham for the, we can call it like the promised land for the Gentiles, if you will. Correct. You can actually see a, a, a very, very parallel track between Israel, the promised covenant land, and America, the promised covenant land as well. They both have a similar foundation. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, that's why I think there's a real link there. Yes, the Jewish people were scattered all around the world, but you're right. This has been the only place that's been a safe haven for all these years because every other nation has persecuted the Jewish people, 
persecuted the Christians and driven them out of the land in many in many uh, instances. We just it's saw this Christian happening in stuff. Europe. Europe has been horrible. Mm -hmm. Christian anti-Semitism was awful. Uh, kept my dad, you know, he taught me all that. I, I read a book called The History of the Jews by Solomon Grazel. And, uh, you know, it's a terrible, terrible uh, scourge with what they did in the name of Jesus for against mm -hmm. Jews. Yeah. yeah, it's a bad history. But fortunately, America has been a, a safe haven for the Jewish people here. The one nation left where there has been very minimal persecution, they can safely grow. Christians have freedom, Jews have freedom, and actually now Muslims have freedom here too. Unfortunately, this is changing. Mm. Well, so, watch the news and see all, I mean, it's alarming. Uh, yes. That's you pulling down the stat, the violence, the lawlessness, and uh, yeah. So, so okay, I, so if you yeah. think about it, um, you, you've had major um, harvest, if you want to put it this way, persecution in the different nations around the world who people have fled to the new nation of Israel. Israel became a nation in 1948, and the first group that came was those per persecuted by the Nazis or Germany and that part of Europe. And then we had Russia. They started to cast their Jews out. So a huge immigration from Russia. We're seeing immigrations from Africa and the, a lot of the Middle Eastern countries. They were forced out of the Middle East once it, a radical Islam established there. Uh, America is the only nation we have not seen a major Aliyah from until now. And this well, is where it gets interesting. Well, politically. Best. All of the. You know, I mean, there's also, you know, what there has been. You're right. We, we probably have the most Jews in America and the fewest that left so far. It's true. I mean, they actually track this. Israel yeah. tracks that information. And they've been calling for several years now. They've been calling for the Jews to make Aliyah and come home, warning the Jewish people that persecution would begin here in America. And it has become, it's begun, and I believe it's because of the signs in the heavens. And I, it wasn't yeah. just blood moons that were a sign in the heavens. There's more. Mm -hmm. So um, back to the blood moons, though. The blood moons uh, we've, we've had now, we're in the third war cycle. So we have these seven-year war cycles every seven years. So 2000, it was when it started. Then it was 2007. The second cycle started. And that was those were the years of the Obama administration. We saw the Arab Spring. We saw the, the reformation of the caliphate above Israel. Israel's enemies were empowered financially and militarily. Mm -hmm. And then the next cycle started in 2014. This is, so we're now in the third cycle. This cycle lasts from 2014. We're almost to the end of it. It ends in 2021 when the fourth war cycle begins. We're just a little about a year and a half away from that fourth war cycle. Does this have anything, Teresa, does this have anything to do with the dreams of Pharaoh? Because I was just, I'm sharing on that right now in the, where we are in the, my book here, the end times. So to, it, does that have something to do with that? It does. When I was researching these uh, war cycles and the blood moons, I was at the same time, I was going through the weekly Torah portion called the parasha. And you mm -hmm. probably go through that with everybody, the, the weekly parasha. Well, I... I, I try to summarize it on, on okay. a little bit. We, we do go through the teachings and, and on that, but this one was very interesting. The one about the dreams that Pharaoh had of the um, the fat cows, the shriveled cow, the fat wheat, the shriveled wheat. It's called, I've got it here. It's the name of that parasha is Meketz in Hebrew. Meketz in English means at the end. Mm -hmm. That's a little clue for us there. That yes. this is a story about the end of days. Now, okay. it starts out by saying, at the end of two years, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing beside the Nile River, and there came out of the river seven cows. Now, the, the rabbis say, when you see a man standing by the river, look for Messiah. And I read that comment, and I went, oh, this, is a, this somehow is a parable of becoming the Messiah. I so, mm -hmm, as I read it, I noticed again there were seven cows, seven years in the first cycle. There were fat cows, then seven shriveled cows. 
then seven fat ears and seven shriveled ears. Four cycles of seven again. Didn't uh, the beginning of that, I think it was 2007, eight, wasn't that right at that time when that uh, economic uh, bubble, bur whatever it was, yes. the, what did they call that? It economic that, collapse. Yeah, collapse in the, in the stock market, a big drop. And then a lot of people are still recovering from that. You yes, know. and several things happen in that in the shriveled cow section. Okay, so to understand the meaning of cows or cattle, the word there is cattle. In Jewish thought, cattle means sheep or goats. So to me, that would mean that was 14 years of the vision of sheep and goats. God was dividing between the sheep and the goats here in America and over in Israel. Now, in Islamic thought, to Islam, seven cows represents war. Hmm. which I thought was interesting because in the second war cycle, we saw the Arab Spring and war in the Middle East, which created uh, the revived caliphate above Israel. And that's setting us up for what's going on right now with the enemies of Israel threatening to come down on her, the enemies of the North, similar to a Gog Magog invasion. So we had fat cows, and then we had shriveled cows, which was war. And we saw so many more things happening during that seven-year war cycle, during the Obama mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, what we got into now and what we're in is the third war cycle is the fat wheat. So wheat, what would wheat be? Harvest. We are seeing both harvest and the division of wheat and tares. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Think about what's happened in this in just the last few years. We have had a, a dividing where we're starting to see who are the real believers and Absolutely. who are following away. It's prophetic. It's what exactly what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And so now we've got the we've got the fat wheat. So it's the division of the uh, the wheat and the tares. God is dividing those who are truly following after Him. Absolutely, the light in the darkness, uh, you know, and and. And, you know, harvest judgment and the holiness of God brings separation and the law distinguishes light, darkness, right, wrong, the Torah, if you will. And all and it's becoming I mean, it's not it's not Democrat or Republican, isn't it? Is no. it? It's really it, those that believe and submit to the authority of, of God in the Bible, the, the word of God, and those who do not. So that it, that's what I see is the real division. Mm -hmm. And my husband, Scott, says all the time, this, you have to decide which God are you going to follow right Absolutely. now? Are that's you going right. to follow the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Another strong God that has risen up here in America is a goddess, Gaia. Wow, I haven't heard of that. Just tell, tell us what that is. If you've ever, if you've studied climate, the climate change agenda, it's mm -hmm. worship of the earth, which is goddess worship or Gaia worship. Mm -hmm. Gaia, the other word for Gaia would be Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Old Testament. And the Jewish people had to fight against Ashtoreth worship. Also, yeah. in Greek, one of the last books that Sister Gwen Shaw wrote was about uh, Ashtoreth and America, you know. Yep. The, Ashtara has arisen in the form of Gaia or climate change. And the other name in, in the Greek is Demeter. Demeter is the Greek goddess, same thing. She's the goddess of the earth. And there's a connection to Demeter and the, four, the fourth horse of Revelation, the pale horse. Mm. The pale horse of Revelation, you know, there's four horses in Revelation. There's white, black, red, and then pale. In the Greek, the word there is green, chloros. It's a, it's a green horse. And if you study that word, it's connected to Demeter, the goddess mm -hmm. of the earth. And there we have a global a, a, a takeover, a global takeover through climate change, which is what's that's happening right now. Of, again. Maybe that's a part of what the, the book of Revelation, Revelation 17 called uh, Mystery Babylon or the, the one, the deception mm -hmm. of the, 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 the deception of, of the last days, right? It is, deception of the last days. Of, one, one more thing I'm going to mention about the um, signs in the heavens and the blood moons. Yes, yes. If you put the blood moons above these four war cycles, 
the blood moons were right in the middle of it. it in a sense, it, the blood moons happened and you can see symmetrically the war cycles on each side with the blood moons at the top in the middle. So I look at the blood moons as a warning of two things, a period of time, these war cycles, because there were other, I, I, if you go to my um, the teaching on the blood moons on my website, I've got the pictures that you can see that these blood moons, each blood moon had other blood moons on each side and it's completely symmetrical. It's the right. only time in history that th these blood moons were symmetrical. So it was 28 years. And what does that mean? Does it mean that this is, this is harvest time, you said, right? And judge harvest, judgment. Harvest Ju and judgment. Now, God always uses the same people when he judges Israel. That's right. And, and we're grafted into Israel. And he uses, right now, they're the modern-day Islam. So these blood moons, every time we had a blood moon over all these eight blood moons, blood, blood moon tetrads, right after that, there was a huge battle, an invasion by Islam against Israel. Mm. One example, 1948, when Israel became a nation, they had the blood moon tetrads. That was one of the places it happened. Oh, yeah. And right after the blood moons, we had the Islamic invasion and they attacked Israel. Every single time we had blood moons, they were attacked by their enemies that way, including this blood moon. We have a global attack, a global Sharia, a global jihad upon the earth against Jews in every nation. You know, another, uh, what I see rising up now, right now in America, uh, is it, it, it just smacks of Marxism, what this whole Antifa thing, but really behind it is also, it's a combination, isn't it? Of different, it uh, but uh, you know, Islam isn't far behind, but Marxism, isn't, uh, communism is, uh, uh, has been a terrible, it's, it's, it's responsible for more people being murdered in the 20th century than any other ism probably. That is very true. And mm. it seems like uh, we have a very radical group who's embracing communism and Marxism, embracing Islam at the same time, and welcoming in Sharia law. They're kind of strange bedfellows, aren't they? They are very strange because, yeah, yeah but you can actually see the connections once you begin to study uh, some of the teachings of Sharia. That again is what the, the four horses of Revelation, I, I do another teaching on the four horses and explaining the four horses of Revelation from the Greek and the Hebrew. And again, it's all about bringing in Sharia law and a global governance, global Sharia. So God uses, <coughs> uses the enemy nations of is really all the way back, you know, you can trace the line, if you will, all the way back really to Adam, but certainly to Noah. And then, and then you see these lines of the the line of the righteous, where Messiah came from. And then you see, you know, Amalekites. We see uh, the Canaanite nations. We see the uh, the rebellion of Esau, and then the bitterness and the family feud. If you you know, and, the, and all of that, which is really really uh, and Babylon, Babylon, mm -hmm. which all of this basically is is rebellion it is uh all of this is rebellion against the government of god it's true it's yeah it's satanic. yeah you should be as god's knowing good and evil that's what uh the serpent sowed into the earth the the, the seed that that is will become this whole thing to try to stop God's kingdom and Messiah from coming and the, the Olam Haba, the world to come, right? Correct, correct. Now, it's, it's interesting, you've been talking about that this is a time of judgment and uh, the word in Hebrew is teshuva, return. So a teshuva, and I'm going to talk about one more sign in the heaven that just happened recently, yeah. which, is, which is kind of cued, cued me into what's happening right now. Do you remember back in 2017, we had the solar eclipse that happened all across the U.S.? It was seen, it started in Oregon, it went all across the U.S., everybody in America. First time, it went, everybody could see it. And they thought it was really exciting. What people don't know was that eclipse happened, although it was August 21st, 
It was on the Jewish calendar, Elul 1, the first day of Elul. Now, Elul is the month of, uh, most people say it's the month of repentance. You're getting ready for the fall feast. So you're kind of judging yourself and cleansing yourself. Yeah, but actually, we're always repenting Jews all the time. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's <laughs> repenting. <laughs> but actually, Elul is the day of, Tesh is the month of Teshuvah, return. Mm -hmm. You're returning to Torah. You're returning to your first love, Yeshua. It's the time where you judge yourself. So it mm -hmm. happened on Elul 1, which is a day of judgment. Now, there's going to be a second solar eclipse that's going to go across the United States in the other direction. So the first one started in, in Oregon and went across the US. The second one's going to be coming out of Canada, going the other direction. And that eclipse is happening April 8th, 2024. That's Nissan 1, right. the month of Passover. Hmm. So we've got Elul 1, the month of Teshuvah, or return. We have Nisan 1, the month of the Exodus and Passover. Now, the place where they cross in the US is in central Illinois. That specific area is known as Little Egypt. I remember you sharing now uh, back in 2015 about that. I've forgotten it. It, it crosses like that, right in the middle of America. It That's does isn't it so what is what does all this mean what what uh, well, help decipher uh, this <laughs> the, well interesting yeah, enough this it. actually goes also goes into president trump being elected and people kind of wonder what is is president trump like why was he elected <laughs> well for one thing you can think of him as the final trump that was one of the things we joked about remember did you we were yeah. joking about that when he was elected. Uh, the final Trump, Trump, oh my gosh. Well, election day that year, you'll never guess what day it fell on the Jewish calendar on the day of Aliyah, the day when the, the, day when the Jewish people celebrate return to Israel. I didn't know there was a day of Aliyah. There's a day of Aliyah. It's called Yom what Aliyah. What is Aliyah, Teresa? Tell us. Aliyah. Aliyah means return. So mm. they're calling for all the Jews out of the nations to make Aliyah or to return and move back to the land. All the prophets say we have to come back. We've been scattered, but in the end, he will bring us all back and we- Yep, and, and I then, believe we're in that time period right now. It's one of the things that God has assigned Trump to do is to prepare and help and assist the Aliyah, the return. I think yeah. that's prophetic. This judgment, the seven years of judgment, the solar eclipses, remember I said America has been a safe place for 430 years. God told me it, that in 2016 at the election, that this would be the end of America. And I think he meant the end of our assignment as a Egypt, a safe place. Or Goshen. A, a Goshen, yes, right. the Goshen right. part of Egypt. And that from 2016, now the harvest would begin of you know what, Lord, Jewish people out of America. I had an experience in 2016 while I was in Israel, I believe, I was staying with Bill and Connie uh, Wilson there after we used, anyway, I don't remember what time of year it was, but I had a, I, I heard the Lord just speak. I was just trying to get my coffee, you know, and he said, the day of the Lord is here. The day of the Lord has come. And I, I you know, and I recognize, I, it may very well be that God has extended the time after grace. We're actually in, he's just had mercy uh, to bring in the harvest. Uh, you know, it very well may be that, uh, you know, we're living on, if, if you will, borrowed time or the, the enemy thought he could bring, bring uh, the tribulation and the antichrist and all that. And it's just been restrained. And I feel that, I feel this, this enormous pressure on, uh, on us now, an acceleration, like, you know, like the, the story of the little boy with his thumb in the dike, you know, <laughs> Rainer being the, the prayers of, of, of the, 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 the true church. And, but it's about it, you know, this, this, 
we cannot hold back all the birth pangs because this is a season of judgment. So all of these things, that's why I'm so fascinated. I, you know, I, I don't think we totally see the end times exactly the same, but you studied this and you have revelation, you have insight in certain areas that I'm very, very interested in. And, uh, you know, we all are. Well, just keep going. Tell us some more. We're, we, 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 you have until seven o'clock. We'll just oh, okay. give it a little here. Back and right. Now, one of the things I've learned in studying Jewish eschatology is that everything is not, I, I don't look at things as being written in stone. As a Christian, we tend to think of almost like fatalism. Well, oh, that's just God's will. There's nothing we can do about that. He's going to judge us. Meh, that's it. And I don't believe that anymore. I believe that God gives us a choice. America Inter has a choice. Interactive relationship. He's always trying. He doesn't want to judge the earth. He, 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 he loves us and he's trying and he responds. God responds when we make ref teshuva repentance, when we make corrections and we, we humble ourselves. God responds in mercy, doesn't he? When we judge ourselves, he doesn't have to judge us. That's right. And there was a, a video um, of a, I think I sent it to Devorah and I think I saw it on your Facebook page of a gal who was jogging on the road. Yes. And Jesus appeared to her and, and he was running ahead of her and she couldn't catch him. And that is what he's doing right now in the church. Wow. He is calling people to get caught up, make him your first love for Chris, my Christian brothers and sisters. We have got to return a teshuva back to our first love of Yeshua. That's, that's it. That's what I, I, it's like, I can't get far away from that orbit. I'll talk on something and I get back into this, you know, yep. get right with God. Yep. Now our, our Jewish brothers and si brothers and sisters, God is calling them back to Torah. Mm -hmm. He's calling them back to righteousness because so many of them are secular, mm -hmm. ungodly. Many of them are atheists. If they're not going to wake up to Jesus, they got to wake up to Torah. He's calling them back to the land where Messiah will gather them and make him. He will appear to them and reveal himself to his people. But they have to get back to the land. And I really believe this is all about making Aliyah right now mm -hmm. for the Jewish people. They're the first ones, I think, that are really going to receive extreme persecution here in the U.S. I'm, I'm seeing it politically. This is shaking. Is God shaking the west to bring the jews home he is this is the this is the uh judgment of end time egypt he's harvesting all the jewish people out of america now to get back to the home back home to israel where the actually the uh, coming of messiah can actually t begin to take place it's all this time clock that we're watching on the end times israel is the center of the time clock we tend to watch the church no, we need to be watching Israel. We need to be watching the, the repentance of the Jewish people, what's happening with Israel, the dividing of the land, which will bring a judgment, the building of the temple. Mm. We need to be seeing if, if they begin to build a temple, that they, temple will end up being defiled. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that Scott and I have done the last several years is study the temple. So we've mm -hmm. been in temple conferences, temple classes, uh, we spent a lot of time studying the temple. We understand that the people who are in charge of studying the temple in Israel have a heart for God. They yes. want a true temple, but the, the enemy temple, want to defile it. Temple Institute, right? They've temple Institute. Ready in, in Israel there. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. One of my one of my best teachers, my favorite teachers, is Joseph Good, and he's an. I expert. remember. Yeah. Do you well, know Joseph? I don't know what happened to him, but. Oh, he's still teaching. Uh, he's doing every Tuesday night. He's doing a Facebook live uh, teaching on Jewish eschatology. Hmm. And he's down in Texas, um, but he is very involved with the Temple Institute. He's, he is a world renowned temple expert. Mm -hmm. So I've learned a lot from him from Rico Cortez is another person who's a temple expert, but yeah. the temple the the, the Temple Institute has a heart for um, God himself. They, they're not going to build an apostate temple. They're going to build a true one. But the well, enemies... I believe that there are, you know, though, I, what I see, I, I just, what, what I taught on, 
just a couple of weeks ago was the temples of the Lord. And uh, in the end times, there, there are actually two different temples. There's the temple of, that, uh, that will be defiled in the tribulation. And then there's the messianic temple that Jesus builds or Yeshua builds in the millennium, which is the end of Ezekiel. And I see that as, uh, you know, I, 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 think, I think that, you know, the hearts of the devout, and, you know, they're right. Uh, but I think uh, it will also be defiled, like you said. So, so yeah, it's, in, it's in, in, yeah. yet God, God uh, you know, he always responds to the heart. In Jewish thought, history repeats itself. So we will have another Exodus. We will have another Hanukkah, which mm. is the defilement of the temple and the yeah. abomination of desolation placed upon the holy place. That will happen again. Only this time when it happens, Yeshua himself will come and cleanse that temple. Well, maybe it's uh, maybe it will be cleansed and not built by the Lord. I don't know. One or but the other. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't know which way it's going to be. <laughs> you know, like I said, you know, uh, I'm very careful about too, trying to get too detailed because there's some things we just don't have all the information. And we're going to find out, when we, you know, that God will show us. We have what we need to have the framework, though. We can know the times and seasons, the cycles, and we can know... Uh, and we can know the, uh, you know, when we see all these things together. So we, we, we have a, a, a very good, uh, we have a, I mean, we have so many, all the end time prophecies are, are converging in such a way we know, we know that it can't be long now without, you know, and so I, what I do is, is uh, you know, because God has shown me a lot. I can't even share the majority of what I've experienced as far as visions and things like that. But God said, he said, I want you to, to proclaim really what my calling is. My calling as a Jewish man is to proclaim uh, Baruch Haba Hashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and to prepare the three or to, to proclaim that then there's three groups of people i just did a a little wrote a little teaching on that and in order to understand the end times and get a panoramic view you have to recognize the different destinies for the jews the unbelieving uh nations and the church and they all have uh, uh god is moving in all three and he's just it's accelerating that's what i see god Sorry. works differently with each group and each group has a different role to play that's right we kind of mingle everybody in together but he works differently with each group one of the things i've learned about prophecy having studied end time prophecy for 40 years yeah. i've learned that we are looking through a glass darkly just as paul mm -hmm. said and that the best that we can do is propose several scenarios and one of those will happen <laughs> So you look at the different scenarios and say, this could happen. I see this might happen. This might happen. One of them is going to be right. And when the right one comes, we'll go, okay, it was that one. <clears throat> Wonderful. Wow. I want to share with you uh, one more sign in the heaven that I think a lot of people forgot about. And I, this is another one I mentioned at the conference in 2015. In September of, seven, of uh, 2017, there was the sign in the heaven of the virgin giving birth. I was going to ask you about that. Revelation. Yeah, I, the revelation That's, sign. Mm -hmm. It's also in Isaiah chapter, I think it's chapter 7 is the other place that's mentioned. Well, this it's, it's a series of constellations. It's the constellation Virgo in the heavens with, uh, it, uh, again, I've got the teaching on my website, but all the constellations come in perfect alignment for her to give birth to i believe it was regulus the king star was about well, to go jupiter that was inside the the jupiter. bell of of virgo the virgin uh the and the and which is you know and and then she gave birth in other words it 
came forth out of Ryan. Right, then that happened on right after Tishri one or the Feast of Trumpets in 2017, which again was right after the solar eclipse. What does it mean? What does it mean? Okay, the, one of the things the Jewish people teach is that the tribulation is called the birth pains of the Messiah. So it's giving birth to, in a sense, uh, it's, it's birth pains, pain, tribulation, to give birth to the new Israel, in a sense, or the birth of the time of the Messiah. Right. So I believe or the, or that- the we, kingdom being restored to Israel. The yes. kingdom coming, or the Messiah coming, setting up his kingdom on earth through Israel. Correct, Is that- correct. Yes, because it's all about setting up a kingdom. That's what Messiah does. He sets up a kingdom here on earth. But the only way to do that is to go through the birth pains. Now, the, something that's different in Jewish eschatology that I'm going to explain. In Christian end time thinking, we have the tribulation. And then at the end of tribulation, Jesus comes. And then the, the thousand year millennium begins with him reigning. In Jewish end time teaching, the millennium begins with tribulation and chaos. That's right. The day of the Lord begins. And I've been saying that. And I see. So we're in this overlap time. That's exactly correct, uh, Teresa, because the day of the Lord is the seventh day or the, the, the last, the, seven, the Shabbat or the, 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 and I've been teaching on that. And the Lord, see, I said the day of the Lord, we, we're in this midnight hour right now that is in this transition period. But it does start with the time of Jacob's trouble or the time of, of the judgment of the nations actually is, tell us more about the day. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Yes. So <laughs> you're, you're exactly right. It's yeah. starting with Jacob's trouble, the birth pains, and it gets worse and worse. And it's like being, if you've never had birth, you know, had contractions you don't know but it gets very very intense before that the baby is born mm -hmm. that's what happens at the beginning of the millennial reign now this is me personally i've done some study and i i honestly think the thousand years began at 2000 right around 2000 it because you think about it, it's been 2000 years since uh, yeshua was here mm -hmm. on the earth mm -hmm. and it was 4000 years before that so basically 6,000 years, we're in the 7,000th year. Yes. And the, these war cycles started at 2000, and now we're in these birth pain cycles. Mm -hmm. So to me, um, I honestly believe that we're in the time of Jacob's trouble right now, leading up to that seven years of intense, um, right. it's I guess- It's just like anyone giving birth to a child. You know, as you get closer, it gets more, closer and closer together the contractions or the birth pangs he said jesus says I, that's what will be you know and the gospel the kingdom shall be preached all the way and, and so we're in this time and people god's people were confused because they said well why why would there be such uh upheaval and you know if if things are gonna you know we think well the, you know it's gonna get better but really god must clean he must remove the wicked from the earth basically it's it's without judgment you, you know that there can be and there's mercy there's harvest there's separation you know there's a lot of backslidden believers that are going to become convinced that maybe they ought to go god's way as things heat up and and god is turning up the heat in the kitchen i mean he's turning it up and uh it, it's it, it, we're just I I the only way the way God the way the Lord described it to me is it's the grand finale. That's what He said to me. He said uh, it it's the time of harvest. Everything is 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 coming to full term. Everything the the righteous, the wicked, Israel. The this is it, and we get to be here. And another image God gave me was since we're so sports oriented here in America. He gave me an image of the checkered flag in the Indy 500. The checkered flag came out. So this is a time of great victory for the people of God, but it's a time of that's that uh, is also this great revival is going to happen all through the tribulation as well. 
in my opinion. I believe that's true. Although we talk about this as being judgment and harvest, judgment and harvest is not a bad thing. It's mm -hmm. a it's a division, uh, but God's the people of God are going to be raised up. This will be our finest hour. That's where right. he will anoint us with power to do supernatural works. I truly believe this. And Jesus and Yeshua is going to appear, begin appearing to people. He's already done it in the Muslim world, where mm -hmm. he's appearing and preaching to them, telling them, I am the true savior, and they're converting. I believe it'll happen all over the world to Christians, Jews, unbelievers, everybody, where we'll begin to do supernatural expo exploits that haven't been seen since the time of Acts. Right. Some, uh, some Pentecostal uh, uh, prophetic teachers, you can, you can go back one or two generations, but you read some, some of their the Christian eschatology, you know, the, the, those, and also those that we admire, you know, the since Azusa Street, the generals and all that, you know. Right. Yeah, I went all, through all of that too. Well, they all prophesied the same thing. There was the, the main message of Azusa Street and the, the latter rain, the outpouring was people get ready, Jesus is coming. It was, that was the, and the, of course, the gifts of the Spirit, the outpouring. But every one of these generals, starting from, you know, Dowie and the great anointed men, generals, and, uh, John G. Lake, you know, that we, we have here, you know, uh, <clears throat> Catherine Coleman, they all got up in the spirit and they prophesied the same thing. Smith Wigglesworth. Ken Hagen, Ken Hagen yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I conclude him, absolutely. Uh, and, and then, you know, Mariah Eder, some of these giants, McPherson, you know, ladies and gentlemen, both. They got up and said, <clears throat> they said, uh, there's going to be a last great out. Every one of them, you can check it out. Every one of them prophesied there's going to be this great grand phenomenon, this amazing, we're going to see the church uh, fulfill the great commission, basically. Supernaturally, we have failed in two days or 2,000 years. But God, and we're in the beginning of that right now, as well as, you know, the attack and, and, the, and, 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 and the upheaval and the shaking. And the Lord said to me, one, I'll just kind of say that I was at a, a end time handmaidens world conference uh, with uh, that's with uh, Gwen Shaw I was close to her she was like my mom for the last seven years or so of her life and I'm very grateful for that but I was sitting there in an afternoon meeting not many people were there I think it was 2005 so a while back away uh, we were just moving to the west coast actually at that time so I'm sitting there and Someone comes out with this just huge Civil War flag that was her great great grandfather's or something. It was, and it, it had been through a Civil War battle. It was huge. It was, it was about as big as, uh, you know, my office here. I mean, this this big flag, and they actually, the uh, you know, they actually carried it into the battle or something. I don't know. So, and and then. Uh, the Lord spoke to me. Uh, I thought it was audible. I it was. I thought some God and somebody. I don't know somebody yelling and nobody heard it, but not yelling, but like a very loud, authoritative voice. The Holy Spirit spoke so strong, and he that he said, "There's coming a third great awakening to America, but it will not happen in the time of ease and prosperity. It will happen." in a time of great shaking, upheaval, and both will come at the same time. And then he's been telling me the last, uh, really the last 100 days, and this is especially around 100 days, I believe that's, that's prophetic, uh, Teresa, but uh, he said, uh, he said, I must humble America, and they're going to, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. Basically, he said, and he, for the whole time of this uh, this uh, shut in, uh, the Lord says, "I am, I'm doing just what I did to the Egyptians and Israel, and I dealt with every heart, and I, you know, and so there was that's his mercy trying to say, you know, so 
we're in a we're in a serious time right now and it's not way off in the future i don't believe because also the signs in the heavens above on the earth beneath i mean we see the central i mean we do and i'm actually going to address that la the last war cycle too real quick please do because this was this is important because we're about a year and a half away from the last war cycle starting it begins September 7th of 2021. That's uh, the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. Again, every time it starts at Rosh Hashanah. So, because remember, these are Shemitah cycles. But this one ends on September 30th, 2028 on Yom Kippur. What is Shemitah? Just tell those that, that maybe don't, aren't familiar with that. What is that? Shemitah yes. is a Jewish way of saying it's a seven year cycle. So mm -hmm. every seven years, you, the land rests. It gets a Shemitah rest. Mm -hmm. So when you're in Israel, in the land, you work the land for six years. And then the seventh year, nobody works. You don't plant or you don't do anything. He's just given you so much abundance in the sixth year mm -hmm. that the seventh year, it's a day of rest or a year of rest. It's called a Shemitah year or Shemitah mm -hmm. cycle, right? And then when you have seven seventies, that's 50 years. That's a, a jubilee year or yovel, and those are very important too. So, and they're both prophetic. So, one of the things, if I was going to encourage the listeners here tonight to do, is number one, start keeping the feasts of God, start following those because you will not understand end time prophecy if you don't know the feasts. Because so much, especially the book of Revelation, has feast language in it. It's the language of, of Rosh Hashanah. It's the language of Yom Kippur, because mm -hmm. those are the fall feasts. Those are the feasts of his coming and of the end judgment. So still celebrate those feasts, even in the new covenant. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, Paul, Paul celebrated them, Yeshua celebrated them, all the disciples mm -hmm. celebrated them. Uh, Paul even did a Nazarite vow where he shaved his head and went to the temple. So yes, they were they were very very caught up in in committed to the to the feasts of the Lord. So mm -hmm. I would encourage people to get involved, start studying the feast, start keeping the feast, just do the best you can. That's what we yeah. did when we first started. Yeah, <laughs> believe me, we don't do it very good at beginning in the beginning. <laughs> well, I've learned one thing. I've learned how to practice and get better. Yes, the more That's we practice, the better we get. I'm going to give you one example here from the book of Revelation, which I think this is one of my favorite examples. This is Revelation, um, let's see, chapter one. And John, uh, uh, John is just, just starting out, right? So he says in cha chapter one, verse 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord on the day of the Lord. And I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write down what you see. And it goes on and then it says, and then the doors were opened. Okay, see where that is. Um, I've lost it. Anyway, but it talks about how the doors are opened. Now, both, that is all language of the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah. Wow. The day of the Lord means it's the end times. That's, that's Jewish terminology. When you hear a loud voice like a trumpet, that's a teruah. Uh, that's a type of blowing. When you blow the shofar, you do a teruah. It's also called a shout, a voice, and it's a specific kind of blowing. And it's done. Yeah, it's a Hebrew name praise as well. It's one of the names for praise, mm -hmm. uh, shouting or blast, uh, right? Yes, it's a blast. So when you hear it, when you read, there's a loud voice. It could also mean it's a loud trumpet. In this case, it's a voice and a trumpet. And then the, the doors were open. The books are opened. That means that's the time of judgment on Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, every year, the books are open. The doors are opened. Judgment begins. You have 10 days till Yom Kippur before the books are closed and the door is closed. And judgment is sealed for the year. So when you hear this, read this terminology, you can recognize that it's either Rosh Hashanah is the context or Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. Rosh Hashanah is when the coronation of the king begins, but the king is actually crowned at Sukkot. So 
you have mm -hmm. it's all about the coronation and crowning of the king as well mm -hmm. so study the feasts and the language of the feasts i'm even starting to do the um the the maksur, the prayer books the prayers of the feasts during those times because yeah. that's where you find a lot of the language so when we when i say that this war cycle is going to be begin september 7th rosh hashanah the feast of trumpets the last one is the shriveled wheat and i don't not quite sure what shriveled wheat means i assume that means intense persecution i don't know if it means it's a, a famine the way it was in the story of joseph um it's possible well, it, it sounds like to me that well remember these cycles alternate between abundance and and i believe it's directly connected to the harvest of the nations i it do too pharaoh that is uh, he's he's representing th that and so that's the that so there's seven years of abundance which happened we had a very prosperous 2000 you know, comparatively to 2007, then, then we had a uh, sort of a mini uh, uh, lack or whatever, not mini, but it was, it was a serious time of, of uh, you know, where, and remember the cows ate the, you know, the cows it, ate. it followed up what was there, uh, the, 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 the lean cows, and then also the same, the idea of abundance and then scarcity. Right. Correct. So what's We're coming gonna, sounds like it's going to be pretty serious as we get into the next war cycle. Yeah, I don't know if it's actually the beginning of the tribulation. Um, the thing that's interesting to me is the fact I, that it ends in 2028, because mm -hmm. if you go by the date that that uh, Jesus was born on that's 3 BC, mm -hmm. that would mean he that he would be coming back in 2000. He died in 2028 and was resurrected. I mean, in 28. 2,000 years from the resurrection. 2,000 years from the resurrection. So that's an important date. Yeah. But again, it's one of those things we're going to have to see and just mm. be aware of what's happening. Well, you know, uh, we all, when we were younger, we get zealous and we want to pick a date and go up into the mountains and eat tribulation food and wait for the end or whatever. And, uh, you know, that's not the approach we are to take. Yeshua said to occupy till he comes. And my favorite thing, uh, the favorite thing that, that it was Richard Roberts, remember from uh, well, when I just started teaching at ORU and God called me to ministry there. And he was, he helped launch me, helped me with so He was my friend, Richard Lindsay. They helped me so much. But uh, he, he came over, uh, to our little apartment and they had dinner with us and we were in the river bend apart right across the street. <laughs> it wasn't anything fancy, but, but I know so what that, that is. <laughs> they, well, but they came and had dinner with it. And I just, you know, it just popped out of my mouth. And I said, Richard, uh, do you think this is 1991? Do you think that Jesus is coming really soon? You know, and, and, you know, in the context we were talking about some of these things and he said, something that just it i still live by it it was one of those kind of things that that's a rhema type word you know he said i live and probably his father said it probably Oral roberts said it originally but he says i live as if jesus could come today but i plan like he won't come for 40 years i love that because you see we are to we are to do all we can and as long as I got breath in me, I'm going to, I'm going to preach this gospel. I'm going to, I am going to uh, do my best to obey God and minister and help people and, 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 and proclaim people get ready. Jesus is coming. You know, God has a different sense of time about very soon than we do. Cause he said, I'm coming very soon. And that was back in, in you know, in revelation, book of revelation, you know, I'm coming very soon. Well, Obviously, God has a different sense of time than we do. Another way of looking at that verse is that he says, I'm coming rapidly. Which ah. means when he shows up, it's like, boom. And he's here like, oh, whoa, <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> or suddenly. He's suddenly. Coming, suddenly. Yeah. Amen. Now, the one thing I've been saying, I've been telling people, people always ask me, what do we do to prepare for this? 
Um, the thing I tell people is to listen to the Lord, learn to follow your, hear the spirit of God and learn mm -hmm. to obey the spirit of God. Teach your children to obey the spirit of God, to listen and learn how to obey, even when he tells you to do strange things, <laughs> but just learn to do it. And then to get yourself to a place where you're mobile, whatever that means, get out of debt. Um, my husband and I downsized so that we can easily move from place to place. We can travel back and forth. And he, we've been working on this for probably 12 years of being mobile. We are very mobile now. We can go anywhere. But I tell that's but I've been don't have any people. tying you, especially the Babylonian system. Debt is a terrible thing. Uh, and God set me free supernaturally from debt about, oh, about the same time we moved here. So just, oh, no, I last eight, 10 years or so. And I just said it. I will never borrow one penny again as long as I'm breathing on that. I learned my lesson. I learned, and, you know, I'm not saying it's wrong for somebody else, but for me, uh, I'm not going to get in bondage like that anymore. That's very nope. wise. If I don't have the money, I just don't buy it. Yeah, that's my advice for people in order to be prepared for whatever happens in this next eight, seven, eight years. It's just be be prepared, be mobile, be able to hear from God. And again, if if people on, on the Facebook page have not had a chance to watch the video of the woman who was walking. Uh, oh, I, to her. Like a, I don't know what they call it. Generation X, Y, Z, one, two, three. I whatever younger person that tattoos and all that. But, but she really had an encounter. And you could tell it was real. I mean, it shook her to her toes. And we need we need a revelation of the fear of the Lord right now, and that He's not our bellhop or Santa Claus or, or some sort of a. Oh, I am a friend of God. Well, <laughs> great. But one thing you won't do when you get to the throne room, because I've been an eyewitness. The one thing you will do is hit the deck. One thing oh. you will do is, you you won't do that. You won't waltz down the middle saying, I am a friend of God. No, you're going to say, oh, just like, uh, just like Isaiah. Woe is me. I, he's holy. He's a great king. He is majestic. He's the king of the universe. And so I'm, I believe we've, we've got to, and we have to go into other generations uh, before us that had more revelation of, of the or the knowledge of the holy so that's the the area we are the least reverent and the most covetous of any generation in all of church history that's what the lord said to me in a when i was in a vision he said that to me personally i mean i saw him he said that to me he said and yet i have mercy on them and and i'm telling you you know don't don't mess around right now that's true. Don't. This is a good message. Don't mess around. We're in a serious time right now. One of the things we're seeing is everybody's masks are coming off and we're seeing what true people truly believe. That's the masks are off. God is dividing the wheat from the tares. And remember, the tares are burned. The wheat is gathered. The tares are burned. The chaff is blown away. You don't want to be one of the ones that's burned or blown away. You want to be one of the ones that's gathered. When that mask comes off and you find out who you really are and people see who you really are, they want to see Jesus in you. That's they right. don't want to see the world. They don't want to see selfishness. And if, if we're not there yet, we need to get there. These are serious times, actually. I, I love seeing what God's doing because he's doing miracles on people's hearts. At the same time, it's hard to watch uh, a judgment and harvest happening in our nation because I love this nation, I love America. And America has a decision to make. America is either oh. going to be a sheep nation or a goat nation. We're gonna mm. support Israel or we're gonna be against her. Whatever choice we make, that will be our judgment. Anybody who goes against Israel will be uh, experience the condemnation and the destruction of the Lord. It's just promised in scripture. So well, we need the old covenant isn't it you, you know and when you when we're when the nations are are dealing with israel that's 
that's something Sister Glenn said to me. She said, the reason why there's such rapid, you know, you read about within 24, 48 hours, there's a, there's, if we do something against Israel, particularly since 1991, there's been an immediate judgment on America. Uh, and, uh, you know, but uh, uh, it's because those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you, I will curse. So that's a, that is the Abrahamic covenant. And, uh, you know, God is testing the nations with Israel. Uh, what are you going to do with her? A lot depends on it. And what I believe God judges the church on how they treated the Jews in the diaspora in, the, in a different, you know, in different ways. What do you do with the Jew that's in front of you? What do you do with that? What do you do with God's people? How do, do you, you know, and so we have to honor everybody. I mean, I'm getting a place where I don't want to judge anybody. That's Jesus in disguise, you know, I mean, the poor, the, the, the and try to, boy, it's hard to stay out of the judging business, but I, I'm doing my best to love everybody just like they were Jesus. Boy, that's hard. I know. But, I have the but, same. But though. <laughs> would you, you know what, we're, we're, we're uh, pretty close to, we have another couple minutes or so. Would you pray and bless, uh, bless us, Teresa? And I would love to. Thank you for all that you shared, and um, uh, you, you should, there's a book in you, you need to write it, you, several books, I know you've probably written books, but, but there's, there's, there's things that I've never heard before, and there's also a depth of, of, of uh, you, you know, scholarship as well within the Jewish eschatology, that's very interesting, I don't know much about it, I know a little bit, but thank you for sharing that with us. It was really my pleasure. And if people are interested in my teachings, you can go to my website. It's called Coffee with My Friends because I came up with that title because uh, I want my friend of mine said, oh, I wish I could just sit down and have coffee with you and talk about the things of the Lord. So I thought, well, that's a good name for a website. <laughs> yeah. So it's coffeewithmyfriends.com. And I'm right now I'm doing a series called What in the World is Happening? And that uh, there's a link to that on my homepage and you can go to that. And I'm going to be doing another update on that one very soon, uh, mm -hmm. talking about a lot of the things we talked about tonight, mm -hmm. but a lot, a lot of my other teachings around there, the blood moons teaching, uh, the one on the revelation, the horses of revelation, uh, America, the end time vineyard, all of those, the linked are on that page as well. So we can learn more from that, but let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, father. You are an awesome God. You are so good to us. You warn us of judgment. You speak through your prophets. You give us time. So we take that time to ourselves right now. If we judge ourselves, Lord, so that we will not be judged um, in a bad way by you, but we will be judged for righteousness and not for unrighteousness. Oh, Heavenly Father, give us grace right, uh, during this time period. As Maurice has said in the past, the time of grace, I probably, I think is coming to an end, but while we have the grace, you've given us time, draw us ever closer to you, speak to us supernaturally in our spirit and fine tune us to until we're at a place where we will obey immediately, whatever you tell us to do. I pray blessings on Maurice and Devorah, their ministry, anoint them, spread this message far and wide. And I pray for every person who is on tonight, just give them supernatural wisdom and vision to see as well. We yes. praise you and thank you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Teresa. You were you, you know, just uh, full of love and encouragement and also warning. We, we are the dear ones listening. I believe you are. And uh, but you know what? This is not a time to shrink back, but to stand boldly for what is right and uh, pray. Continue to pray for our nation. God wants to turn these these uh, young, rebellious, lawless uh crowd uh, that's destroying so much he wants to turn to we need we need revival we need awakening here we need god's supernatural arresting of the pride and humble us lord hallelujah amen
Well, listen, I, I want you to, uh, you know, uh, if you can be a blessing to financially to, to Sister Teresa, and how can they, uh, how can they uh, sow or give into your ministry? Can you tell them? I don't take any money for my ministry. I don't have a donation page. Oh. Um, I just love to teach. Um, well, I'm life. worthy of, of being supported. And, you know, I think it's good, good, uh, good soil to sow in. And if they, if somebody would like to, they can donate to your ministry and just uh, make it towards me. Just make a notation. This is for Teresa. I'll be back in California in about another week and I'll get back in touch with you. And I'll I'll send you, I'll send you whatever I can. We, we, I'll ask Devora. She's the, but we, we, I always, I believe in sewing financially. Yeah. So that's a good thing. But uh, yes. Okay. Well, you're, uh, that's, that's awesome. God, ha we operate in different ways, but it's all right. It's scriptural. It's scriptural to sow and reap as well. And it's also very noble and uh, high following to do what you're doing. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, hallelujah. So if you want to, just uh, uh, send something uh, to uh, through Slar Ministries uh, and on, on our website there. Uh, if you want to give some, just designate it to Teresa, we'll send it to her. And uh, hallelujah. I, I was blessed today. I guess I came out of that school in that time. And, it, you know, we're all kind of a product of the different times in the church and you know but anyway thank you so much thank and you say good night now and uh uh may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may the lord be gracious unto you may the lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his shalom peace and may god's abundant grace be yours. May you be blessed now. And we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow will be our Ever Arab Shabbat service. And uh, uh, and also, uh, uh, I'm going to read you the Shlomo, uh, a Shlomo story, my wife's rabbi, Shlomo Karlbach. Uh, and uh, he has some beautiful Hasidic stories. So that's fun. And, and uh, uh, and uh, we'll continue. I think I may continue with the finishing the blood covenant uh, that we were started with E.W. Kenyon and sharing, just reading that. And we'll see what God has, or we'll continue in Romans. And I just, every day, God, what do you want to do today? And that's how Teresa uh, came on. I, I was taking a nap and, and you know, I wasn't thinking about anything. I, I, Right, right before I woke up, the Lord said, "Call Teresa, Bruce." I said, "Okay," and then He wants wander on. So you did great tonight. You blessed us. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna say shalom. We're shalom. We'll see you. Good night. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you tomorrow. God bless.